Welcome back to WDRB. You're watching Mr. Mulligan, which is a replica of a historic aircraft in the airbox right now. This aircraft was actually built to bring uh, to win a very famous race bass in the 1930s. Talk about that in just a moment. First, we want to give a shout out to the Heiser Hearing Institute. Thank you so much for providing our real-time closed captioning today. Lindsay Allen alongside Gil Corsi and Sean Dolly. We're gonna let the roar go overhead right now as we come to you back to you from Southern Indiana. Yes, thank you to Upland Brewing for giving us this wonderful, perfect perch here on the patio for Thunder over Louisville. Yeah, Mr. Mulligan, really interesting story, Sean, because if you go back to the 1930s, racers were like the epitome of technology at the time. That's that right. These yeah. uh, race, uh, uh, plane races were sport and the world watched and if you won the purses were were big sure so you know with the onset of world war ii that really kick-started mass production of different type of aircraft but in the 20s and 30s only a couple decades removed from the first flight at kitty hawk north carolina mm -hmm. this was a pioneering age of aviation so in 1935 when the original aircraft you were looking at was built you're talking about time in america when slow-moving cars, if you even call them that, were sharing the road with horse-drawn buggies. And to think that there were people that had a pioneering spirit to strap themselves into a plane and go across the country is what set in motion the decades of American air superiority. It took people to, to take the risk and do these things. And we see the plane like that today. It reminds you, you know, we didn't go straight to F-18s. There were some intermediate steps. So as the story goes, the original Mr. Mulligan won the race from the West Coast uh, to the side of the uh, National Air Races in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'll pause occasionally as it's going behind us because you can't compete with that noise. Uh, and so that was the Benedict's Trophy. And again, it was it was prestigious of, of that time. Uh, the original Mr. Mulligan uh, crashed. Uh, yeah. It was right. it was involved in a crash. It was the only one made of its time. This this DGA six. There were other models, other numbers yeah. to come, but the there was only one DGA six. This is a replica of that model. It was built by the grandfather of Thunder performer Matt Yonkin, and it's flown today by Doug Rosie. Rosen, uh, Rosendat of uh, Iowa, and uh, I watched some interviews with Doug, and he just calls himself a, a, a Iowa farm boy, playing in the sky. Sure. Well, I don't know at what age we boys stop wanting to play with toys. Never. I can tell you it's not 50. <laughs> no, so, no, you know, no, no. Um, we know from um, age like 5 to 10, we buy them at Mattel. When we get into later years, uh, we make our own airplanes and do things like that with them. So it's it just, again, I, when it won that trophy in 1935, it crossed the country at an average rate of 238 miles an hour. That's essentially time traveling. You think about nearly 100 years ago to go that far that fast, you know, that just, that just ushered in that um, long you know, history we ended up having, you know, with uh, more and more advances in aviation. 